Hi, welcome to Messier Mantra. I'm your host, Messier, Mike Messier, that's me. I'm getting a little nervous because my guest is a good friend of mine, but he's also a man of high caliber, Steve Feinberg. Mike Messier, I'm not, I'm, don't be, you're my buddy. Yep. I'm so happy to be here. I'm grateful to be here. Well, I'm, I'm happy you're here too. Thank now, you. I want to get your official title correct. I am the, I am uh, Steven Feinberg. I am the executive director of the Rhode Island Film and Television Office. And I am under the umbrella of the Rhode Island State Council on the Arts. That's awesome. RISCA. RISCA, a government agency I'm, headed by the illustrious Randall Rosenbaum. Okay. I'm not familiar with Mr. Rosenbaum, but he sounds well, like he's doing a great I job. I love him. Yeah. He hired me, brought me back home to Rhode Island, and he is, uh, he's been doing it for, I think, 18 years, executive director of the Council on the Arts, and they give out grants, fellowships. Uh, it's an amazing agency with, I think there are eight people who are uh, doing all kinds of education and folk art and all different organizational grants, everything, good stuff. Nice, so Riska is there to help, Rhode Island Riska is? is great yeah. for artists. Nice, and when you just, I wanna jump in something real quick. You said you had left and you came back. Where'd you go in the meantime? Well, so I'm from Cranston, Rhode Island. Yep. Grew up in the Garden City area. Made my first movies when I was eight years old. Filmed all my neighborhood friends and used an eight millimeter camera, Super 8, had the support of my folks, my dad being a sixth grade teacher, and at the age of 18, I went to URI for a year. Yep. Always dreamed of going to Los Angeles. When I was 18, after my first year of college, went to UCLA, summer of 1982. Mm -hmm. uh, saw a film getting made, uh, Richard Gere and Valerie Kaprisky called Breathless. Okay. There at the uh, at school. Then I went to USC Film School. And my classmates included Joe Johnston, who directed... Uh, Captain America. Wow. He won an Academy Award. He designed all the Star Wars films, the nice. original Star Wars films. Um, he created the Rancor, and um, he wanted to direct, so uh, George Lucas sent him down to uh, USC. So he was in my class. Larry Karaszewski and Scott Alexander, who did, uh, well, recently they did O.J. Simpson. Wow. That. They did the... Uh, um, Man on the Moon. Andy Kaufman movie. Yeah, the Andy Kaufman yeah. movie. Uh, Ed Wood. Oh, yeah. A lot, you know, a lot of really good projects. Uh, and that recent one, Big Eyes. They just did had done Big Eyes. And just a really good classmates. Heathers, the, the Dan Waters. Oh, yeah, with, uh, that's the movie that gave Christian Slater and Winona Ryder. Yeah, and exactly. And there's just a lot of really good uh, talented people that I work with. But before I graduated from film school, I, I sold a script to 20th Century Fox and then Warner Brothers, and did a film in Australia, Luxembourg, sold another script to Universal. So I was making my living uh, writing spec scripts mostly, um, which got purchased, and then sometimes I would get hired on, a studio might have an idea. I did a project called for Scott Rudin, okay. who's, who's the president. Name, yeah. so, well, Scott Rudin was the president of 20th Century Fox. He ended up, now he's a multi, winning Academy Award winning producer. Um, I did a project called UFO Scouts for him. I did a uh, one of the um, I did a treatment for one of the Star Trek movies. Wow. Where they went to the prison because um, we had done a prison, futuristic prison movie. And then in 2004 uh, there was a vacancy yep. for my position mm. and uh, I think 150 or 200 people applied. Wow including me, yep. and um, I had the support of like the chairman of ABC and Panavision and Spelling Entertainment, and, um, and I got the job, and I had goals to create tax incentives and all this other stuff, and here we are now, 12 years later, and $400 million worth of production has come through the state That's of Rhode awesome. Island. Doesn't it feel good to help people get work? And Mike, it's <clears throat> really wonderful, and you know this. I see people, like I had, a, I had a person come to my office who's doing some, some of the lower budgeted right. films who wants to raise up the opportunities for herself. And so we try to help steer her to some folks that are, uh, whether it's doing commercials uh, or doing some feature films, that they have some money and they can help. Right. Um, we have a director right now um, who directs The Walking Dead doing a, uh, a film just under a million dollars. But then I've got a, a, a 
multi-million dollar film we're going to announce this week, you know, with an Academy Award winning legend, another Academy Award nominee, and it gives more opportunities. So all this stuff going on at the same time, right? it's fantastic. The state of uh, Rhode Island and New England in general are kind of bursting at the seams sometimes, it seems, with yeah. projects. And like you are just alluding to, some of these are uh, the bigger projects, the uh, Woody Allen project. I was trying to remember the name of the one that filmed the Newport, which is huge. Uh, uh, which which Moonrise one? Moonrise Kingdom? Oh, Moonrise Kingdom, right. Wes Anderson. I mean, that film, you know, uh, did you ever see um, the Royal Tannenbaums? I did. It's one of my favorites, yeah. right? So when I first met him, we met at the lighthouse yeah. in uh, uh, Beaver Tail, and I said, uh, "Anybody that can create the character of Pagoda is a friend of mine." Right. And we got along <clears throat> famously, um, but Moonrise Kingdom opened up the Cannes Film Festival. Yes. So that was, and then I got invited to go. They asked me to go. So here, this kid from Garden City in Cranston, Rhode Island, right. is at the Cannes Film Festival, and the movie that was shot in Rhode Island. Opening up to a global audience. Yeah. It's like, a fa and they standing ovation. It was fantastic. And people still come back to the Newport area, Jamestown area, because they want to know where Wes Anderson. Right. Um, and I'll give you another, somebody told me this, uh, this woman, Allison Varecchia, who just worked on the Newport Opera House. Right. She told me that she had a client that we were competing, the state of Rhode Island was competing against some other place uh, to do some kind of business opportunity. And it was like neck and neck. And then she brought this person towards the church over there and he said, Moonrise Kingdom. She told right. me this last week. Moonrise Kingdom, I, we've got to go inside. And she said, because of, she goes, Steve, you didn't even know this, but because the film was done there at that church, it closed the deal. Wow. And I never would have known. But it was That's Moonrise great. Kingdom. And we just did the Woody Allen movie, Irrational Man. And, right. You know, it's just we're. Was it's it Infinitely good. Polar Bear? Infinitely Polar Bear with um, Mark, Ruffalo? Mark Ruffalo and right. Zoe Saldana. We filmed that in uh, Providence. And uh, I was just talking to him this morning, and we, we, we developed a really good friendship back and forth and crack each other up. But um, that was a movie that was done pretty much in Wayland Square. We also filmed. Um, in East Greenwich and Warwick on, on Ives Road. Um, and Erica uh, Hampson, who produced that, also produced uh, Measure of a Man with um, uh, Donald Sutherland, right. which we filmed that in uh, pretty much in the South County area uh, in November, October, November. And now she's about to produce a new movie in the Newport area with uh, that we're about to announce that is going to bring a lot of excitement to the state of Rhode Island, and uh, it's good. While we're talking, I'm going to uh, ask the studios. We have some great uh, gentlemen that work here, Cody and Kevin, and they're going to put some uh, photographs up on the screen. Oh, okay, so Just cool. as the audience, uh, okay. so they know. But um, what I think a question that the viewer here, might be, that's uh, myself, you, and uh, Chad Verde, uh, oh. film producer, just did Bleed for this, and that was, Silence. Yeah. This is you and Bill Clinton, who uh, <laughs> quite a personality. And can I tell you what we were talking yeah. about? Yeah. James Bond. James Bond, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Clinton's a big James Bond. I can see why. Well, I had to... just seen the documentary. <laughs> I had just seen the documentary. Yep. Here's you with my buddy Tommy Danucci of uh, Woodhaven Media, who, yep. who's done a lot of great, Almost Mercy and yep. Self Storage and other films shot in Rhode Island. And yep. Here's some you with James DeMonico, that yep. was on the set of um, Purge uh, Election. We filmed that at the uh, airport. Um, that was actually the last day of filming. Um, and that, 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 I don't know if you've seen the trailer for that. I've purged, I've purged. Like, right, it looks right, like something right. uh, in an election. So it's coming out July uh, 4th weekend. And that is from the Give Me Five um, uh, Film Lab, which we're going to be doing tomorrow, actually, and then next uh, Saturday as well. Those are students who are working together, some from Winsocket all the way to Westerly, Block Island. We bring them all together. Right. And uh, they learn how to make movies together and collaborate. And then later on, uh, in May, we, we do a showcase of films uh, that they made at the uh, Odeon Theater. Yep. Ansel Elgort and Chloe Moretz from uh, uh, at the Academy Awards last year, and then they um, made a movie here in Rhode Island called November Criminals that's going to be coming out uh, this year. And there's Mark Ruffalo in Wayland Square, wow. uh, Infinitely Polar Bear. And he's become a great friend. 
and uh, uh, Dana Delaney and Jerry Ryan. We did the TV series Body of Proof. Yeah, nice uh, um, Steve Sandwich there. Oh, <laughs> it was one of yeah. my best days. <laughs> right. um, and that is filming. Uh, um, uh, Michael Bay uh, did a um, Victoria's Secret commercial uh, for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and we did that uh, there at the Rosecliff, and we also used the Elms in Marble House. So that's their uh, filming. There's Woody Allen. Oh, yeah. We've heard of him. Yeah, and that was um, at Jamestown. Um, Beaver Tail, he, he was doing a whole riff about almost falling on the rocks and splitting open his head. And, and then uh, a couple of days later, he invited me to uh, do a ride on a yacht for uh, a half a day, and we just rapped about movies. Yeah. Um, and he talked about Peter Sellers and... Uh, Donald Sutherland. There's Donald that, Sutherland. Yeah. That's on Measure of a Man. Yeah. yeah. And he, that... We were talking about um, Robert Aldridge from Cranston, Rhode Island, oh. was a director who gave him his first uh, gig. Um, he did The Dirty Dozen, and he did a bunch of other films, and he said, I love Robert Aldridge. <laughs> He's a black sheep. Wow. And there's us. That's us. Back to the mantra. Yeah, this, now that's a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, right, uh, two guys. I'm the horror movie. Right, now we're, both, we're good, we're good yeah. guys, I think. Yeah. I think. <laughs> Despite some people want to But, no, I mean, what I like about what you're doing is uh, you kind of have the two-fold attack. You're talking about people coming to your office who are locals, and, and you can relate, you know, because, like, you, like, exit 14B off 95, you know, Garden City, right? Right, right. So you know the whole deal of, like, hey, I'm in Rhode Island, uh, you know, this, this small state in the country. How do I get involved in filmmaking? And I, I left out the word Hollywood filmmaking because at this point, it's not even Hollywood so much. It's, right. It's international market, I yeah. would call it. Because Hollywood, in my you know, humble insights, um, is not the Hollywood of 1950 or 1960. There's so many films being made with tax incentives like here in Rhode Island, our neighboring states, Connecticut, and s states in the south even. They're all kind of vying for the attention of these filmmakers and more importantly, perhaps the financiers of the filmmakers. How do we get our tax credits? And, um, that's interesting. We don't have to go into it too much, but based as a motivation to potential filmmakers and financiers watching the mantra here, right. tell me a little bit about that. So, so when I was um, in Los Angeles, I ended up doing a film in Australia, and then we did one in Luxembourg, um, and the driver of that were some tax incentives. And basically... Um, what we have in Rhode Island, there was only one other state, Louisiana, that really had a tax incentive. And they were competing against Canada and some of the foreign uh, countries. Um, so I wrote legislation. And basically what it says is, if you spend a million dollars, let's say, in Rhode Island, qualified expenditures using Rhode Island companies, um, on the ground in Rhode Island. You can't be like an executive producer with your feet up, smoking a cigar right. in LA. You have to be on the ground in Rhode Island. Let's say you spend a million dollars, it's qualified, it's audited by the Division of Taxation. You will then get 25% back. Yep. And right now it's in the form of a tax, a transferable tax credit. There's legislation that's in now that um, was just uh, put in um, to the House and Senate uh, in General Assembly this past week that would give a direct rebate so you'd get 100% back. Wow. Which is pretty cool. Of, the, of that 25%, you don't have to sell it to anybody. Right. So there's that. Um, so what it says is we are encouraging filmmaking in Rhode Island. We're going to give you all, like a coupon back, 25% off, if you spend it all on the ground using Rhode Island companies, Rhode Island people working on the ground. And... That's great for our crew, crew members. So now people go, I'm going to stay in Rhode Island. Right. I'm not going to move to New York. I'm not going to move to L.A. Right. I'm going to stay in Rhode Island. The other thing is our uh, colleges and universities. When I was in Rhode Island, we really didn't have any film programs. There right. was maybe one that was critical studies, but there was nothing. Now all the colleges and universities, whether it's Rhode Island College, URI, um, you know, they all have some sort of film program. So in Woody Allen, for example, we had 20 students that had been studying Woody Allen two semesters prior that were now interning on his film. They right. loved having interns. Wes Anderson, same thing. Now, if you had told me while I was a kid in Cranston that I'd get to work on a Woody Allen film or a Wes right. Anderson film or Purge 3, like that wouldn't even have been a – that wouldn't – I couldn't even have dreamt that. Sure. So we have that, and that's great for our colleges, and they use that as a promotional tool. Right. So you've got that. You've got an impact on the tourism. 
Is this, you know, I would just hope if I could jump in because what a lot of these politicians, and I'm sure you've dealt with this a lot more than I have, unbelievably so, these politicians, some of these politicians, not all, they have no clue, and these are smart people, that uh, if you film in Newport, you know, Moonrise Kingdom, Wes Anderson, or, you know, Woody Allen, or, you know, even, uh, or, you know, uh, our friends Tommy DiNucci and Woodhaven, Chad Verde, like, the films that are being made in the state of Rhode Island um, generate residual tourist attractions. Take what you said five minutes ago, Moonrise Kingdom. You've got people coming in from over the world. I want to see where Moonrise Kingdom was filmed. And you can, I mean, that's... There's the, a tour. Right. I was going to say, that. I was just There's going to say a tour, a tour yeah. uh, of film locations. But let me give you a perfect example. The Jane Pickens Theater. Yep. Kathy Staub owns the Jane Pickens Theater. In Newport. In Newport. Birthday, her birthday is November 15th. Okay. Okay. So Kathy Staub says that when we have a film like Moonrise Kingdom or Irrational Man, guess what the number one film for her is of that summer for, or the whole year? Right. It's Moonrise Kingdom, Irrational Man, Evening. Right. So anytime there's a movie that's filmed in Rhode Island, especially in the Newport area, she ends up getting repeat customers. And so there's that effect. So it's, it's the making of the film. Yes. And the hotels and the food and all the other, and buying. You know, when you're doing a movie and an actor needs a pair of pants, he's not going to have one pair of pants for the role. They, they'll make duplicates. They have to do right. duplicates. So they'll get six pairs of those same pants for that film, as an example. Catering? So, catering. All the things, it's like a little army, right? And they're right. also paying for the police and the fire department. They're paying for all these things. Their location expenditures, all this stuff. And millions of dollars. Yes. So you've got that. Then the film comes out on a, uh, and then all, and of course we talked about the colleges and universities. So there's that impact, and all those people are paying for uh, their university for their uh, schooling, but a lot of them are also paying for housing and all that right. other stuff. On top of that, when the film comes out, Woody Allen says to the New York Times. If there's one place I would rather, I'd love to live all the time, Newport, Rhode Island. Does that hurt us? Not no, at all. No, no, yeah. A movie called, remember Dan in Real Life? Yeah, I do. S Steve I Carell. I a little extra work, and I met Steve Carell for just a moment. He was a great guy. Steve Carell and Juliette Binoche. It was called Dan in Real Life. Yeah, it was a great film. In Paris, my friend Kevin Flynn was in Paris, and there was the poster, and guess what it was called? Dan in New England. Dan in Rhode Island. Love at first sight in Rhode Island. That's awesome. So here you have this giant poster. He took right. a picture of it. And he said, oh, my God, I'm in Paris, but they're promoting love in Rhode Island. Right. Love at first sight in Rhode Island. Yeah. I mean, so that was on an international level. Um, and then we talked about there's the theatrical, right. right? But then they show it on free TV, pay TV, in perpetuity. So... They're still doing stuff from The Great Gatsby, 1974 in Newport. Right. You know, that Robert Redford and Mia Farrow were in. There's still that magic that they're talking about. And they're still doing, hey, go to the Newport mansions and do all the stuff and have a Great Gatsby day and right. then come see the movie at the Jane Pickens. So the more we do, the more it's promoted to a global audience. And that, to me, is exciting. Very exciting. And as a... As an actor myself, I can speak on behalf of some of the actors in this area. And let's, you know, let's face it, it's very tough yeah. as an actor to even get a day player or a principal role in these big movies that come to Rhode Island or any state. Right. You have to have made a career for yourself, networking yourself. And so a lot of uh, actors I find on the social media gripe and complain about uh, not getting the bigger opportunities throughout the whole country about their acting. But the reality is you have to make yourself marketable. You have to... If your film producer or director is going to cast an actor, that actor has to bring something to the table themselves. And, you know, I may love basketball. Right. I may play some basketball, you know, on the uh, pickup game. I may dream of being an NBA player. But when I'm competing against other players that are better than me, that can dunk the ball, that have, uh, you know, better, uh, you know, Training, skills, whatever. Yeah. Whatever it is, skills. That's the way it is. It's a highly competitive industry. So you may get some extra roles, you may get some small roles, but is that going to necessarily sustain you for your entire life to have that life like a Johnny Depp or a, a Helen Mirren or any of those people? You know, that's 
not easy. And maybe your place is doing commercials. Like, you know, I see someone like a Julie Dawson or, right. you know, I see all these different folks doing different things. You know, I look at like someone like Armin Garrow, oh, wow. you know, who's a police officer or detective. And then he had these small roles and he did Brotherhood and then he did Sopranos. And now and he's, he's doing vinyl. vinyl yeah. You know, and I love seeing that. And Armin Garrow, for people that know, it, I think it's from East Providence. Rhode yes, Island. he is. Right? What, what I was getting at actually is... Um, to compliment your point is that as an actor who was just getting started, for myself, um, Annie Ball Hall at LDI Casting called me in the middle of an afternoon one day and left a message. You know, I wish I had picked up the phone, but she left a message <laughs> saying, Messier, call me. I got something for you. Wesley Snipes. I'm like, what? Next thing you know, I'm having four auditions for this Wesley Snipes vehicle. Hard luck. Hard luck. And um, they actually started filming the movie. It's crazy business. They started filming the movie before they even cast the character called Eugene. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute, you, you know. But then they got me in the movie. They cast me, and it was actually Sybil Shepherd I played yep. her son. And yeah, she, I was there. Yeah, according to Mario Van Peebles himself, Sybil kind of had the final word. Like, Mulhall recommended me. She went through the whole process with me, probably spending extra hours in this. Because she was campaigning for me. I'm talking about yeah. Annie Mulhall, yep. the cast. Yep, yep, I remember. She, yeah, so my point is, like, um, on the negative or the beans and business side of entertainment or, or acting, it is very tough. But on the good side, when a Rhode Island hosts a film like Hard Luck or like Moonrise Kingdom, there's always going to be that hope and a possibility and even a reality there might be and there probably is going to be something for somebody. Right. And the more you get out there, the more you give yourself opportunities, the more you promote yourself um, and the more you can do diverse roles, the more you'll you know, maybe let's put Mike Messier up there. He might right. not be exactly what the writer had on the page, but they're pretty open-minded. As a matter of fact, I was just talking to uh, Julius Ramsey, who's the director of, like I said, he did The Walking Dead, and he's doing a movie called Revelers. Yes. So um, there's a character, I can't give too much of the plot away, but there's a character um, that comes into the town. And they had perceived this character one way, but then they kept open-minded, and they've got this new actor who had some wild looking tattoos on his head. Sure. And I was like, he's really a nice guy, but he's intimidating right. looking and unique looking. Right. And they cast him and right. he's got he makes an impression. You made a positive impression. And I was there when you were filming some of the stuff in hard luck towards yeah. the climax of yeah, that film. With the shovel and everything. Yeah. yeah. And so it's always nice to see people getting opportunities and um, opportunities to shine and Again, sometimes you can work on the smaller films, right? You know, whether it's a you know Tom DiNucci film or David Gear film. Don't or, say small with those guys. Okay? No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm yeah, saying, but yeah. you know, those might be like a million dollars or right. more, and then you get. You know, like we saw Danielle Goulden, right. and she got this opportunity to be like a star in role. Yes. In that film, Almost Mercy. Yeah. Almost Mercy, and then you're going. Okay, and Jesse Default. Yep. And then you're saying, okay, wow, maybe Woody Allen will cast them. Right. You know, maybe, uh, uh, you know, someone, uh, maybe Wes Anderson will cast them. Right. And now they're in, a, in another light, and which adds value, again, to Tommy's film or David's Correct. film, et cetera. So... It you generates... Know, work yeah. generates work. And, right. And, uh, um, and now... The other thing that I love seeing, too, is that, you know, some people will do like a $6,000 film. Right. Right? Make some mistakes, learn from having these great experiences, and the people that work on their crew, then they get a little more money. And they're, now they're using the tax credit. Now they're getting an extra $25,000 because they do a $100,000 film. But that $100,000 now translates to a one twenty-five. You know, it's, so it's all this stuff going on. It's just building. The right. crew's building. Our talent pool's building. And now people like yourself, people like Richard Griffin or Tommy or, um, uh, you know, Ian Mohall, different people are starting to mentor. Right. Mentor some younger folks. Yep. And they're coming on. I mean, I've seen an assistant location manager become a location manager, become a producer, and now is the vice president of Universal wow. Production. Wow who's from Rhode Island. Nice. And I love seeing that because the other nice thing about those Hollywood productions are the relationship building that you never would have had uh, opportunities to interact. Because, hi, how are you? And then you develop a relationship right. and trust. 
and then phone calls. And one thing leads to another and say, hey, by the way, there's this job opportunity. You might have to move to Los Angeles temporarily, but it's an opportunity. What I'm, yeah, and I, everything you said leads me to this point is uh, people need to appreciate what you're doing, what other people like in Animal Hall and, and other people, Carol Conley, we should definitely mention Let's mention Carol Conley. Oh Connelly boy, you know, she's office. doing so much work, you know? And people don't, George Marshall, we just went to that Oscar party, Rhode Island International Film Festival, and the other great festivals in this area, um, you know, there's, there's more than one festival that bring in filmmakers and excitement and workshops. Well, can I, can I talk about the Rhode Island International Film Festival is now in its 20th year? Yep. 20th year. So you've got George Marshall working with Sean Quirk. These guys bring, they premiere films. Right. They're now, oh, they're the only film festival in New England that is Academy Award sanctioned for uh, best short film, animated short film, live action short film, and documentary short film. They just got accredited by BAFTA, the British Academy Award. That's, that's tremendous. So they had eight films this past year at the Academy Awards, that films that premiered at the Rhode Island International Film Festival. And I know the next one coming up, the opening night's going to be August 9th, which is a Tuesday. Um, normally we're at PPAC. I hope we can do PPAC again. Opening night is great because you right. get people from all over the world. The first time they've come to the United States, where do they come? Providence, Rhode Island. Right. We're, PPAC. They're meeting people. They're meeting right. people like yourself, other filmmakers. They're, they're seeing their films in a palace because right. PPAC's a palace. And I'm just so grateful for the Rhode Island International Film Festival and then the folks at Scene and the Providence Children's Film Festival and the Newport. You know, we are so fortunate. And it's fortunate to have you. Guess what? We've blazed through this episode. We're going to have you on for another episode. We did not. Did we go yeah, through that? It's, I tell you, the mantra goes quick. <laughs> so we didn't even get to your mantra, but next episode we'll do two mantras okay. on the Messier Mantra with Steve Feinberg. Thank you, Mike Thanks. Messier. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for watching this episode of Messier Mantra with our special guest, Steve Feinberg. We'll see you next time on Messier Mantra.